Thank you and welcome back for the second part of my View Composition API Firebase integration. We're going to uh, finish up the login and logout, and then we're also going to generate any errors that appear around the login and logout. Um, this code is based on the original code that we had um, from the last episode, but we're going to start to fill out the login page here. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through this because this isn't really relative to what we're trying to teach here. I'm just going to add the code to allow the user to provide a username and a uh, password that will be entered and we will pass to our uh, view composition function to make the API calls to Firebase to support a login and a, and a logout. Um, this is once again basic stuff. Username, password, using the V model to capture the information that gets passed in. Do a little bit of cleanup on the login page. Um, now we got the template set. What's going on here with this? Uh, oh yeah, we got to make sure we have everything inside of just one div at the top level. Looks like it's good to go. We have our basic information set. Okay, now oh, we need a button. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a button here, and the button will be connected to the actual action. That action, sorry. The button will be connected to the method that calls the uh, login function. So we have our button, we have our, our placeholder method, which we'll fill in uh, later in the script section of this file. Well, let's clean this up a little bit and get the login button in the next line. Please forgive my um, CSS. I'm just kind of hacking my way through this here. It's, once again, it's not the purpose. The other thing we're going to do here is we're going to um, the uh, composition function will return an error if an error is generated when you call a Firebase function. What we'll do is uh, we'll use a VF, we'll check in if there's actually an error, we will display the error. Add a little comment there, kind of tell people what's going on. Since a lot of people don't really read, uh, excuse me, a lot of people don't really read the additional information that's provided, so we'll just put the comments right here inside the code. And hopefully that'll be a little bit more helpful. Uh, but don't forget there is a blog post on um, Dev 2.0 that uh, um, ties along with this. Uh, just to clean it up, I'm going to create a, uh, a creds object that I'll put inside of um, the data section of my script. And the creds, that's how I'm abbreviating credentials, uh, will take a username and a password. We're going to start it out as empty. You know in view you have to set the initial value of their object or else uh, it won't be reactive. So um, let me just check and make sure I have all of the basic stuff that we need in. Looks like I do. Now we're going to put our methods in. We have our do login method. As I said in the beginning, this is the method that will actually call the, the view composition API. Excuse me. Okay. Looks like we got some error. What's the error? Um, cred's not. Yeah, this is creds. That's much better. Okay. Now we have, we see the basic information. Just put a simple alert in there to test that. Looks like everything is fine. And now we'll move on to the next part here. Uh, just a little bit more checking here. We got the creds username and the creds password that we're going to kind of display. When you do submit, make sure we're getting the proper data. Looks like we are getting the proper data. And now we can start to. Yep, everything looks good. Here we go. Now we are going to uh, import our use login of view composition function. Uh, we're following the nomenclature of use in the beginning and then whatever specific functionality. So it's use login. Uh, I haven't created the file yet, so that's where we're getting our error generated. We're setting the um, placeholder uh, set up inside of our um, form component here. And in our setup, we're going to get our state information back from our use login uh, view composition function. So I'm kind of doing it in reverse. Where I'm kind of laying out inside my code how you actually are going to use the function, and then we'll circle back around and we will create the function. Um, the properties that are going to come back from my state, I'm using the destructuring to kind of explain what they're going to be. 
And when we get inside the use login function, you'll see what the uh, what the properties are returned. Okay, so now we're in use login. We quickly just imported the basic stuff. You know, you need to port in the two refs and the reactive, and we've imported the Firebase library. Um, I'm not going to dig too deep on the Firebase code. The um, the login and the logout functions that I'm going to utilize here can be cut and pasted directly from the uh, Firebase documentation. Once again, um, the links to the documentation are included to the blog post that's associated with this um, video, and I will also include a link to the blog post, as I stated before, in the comments below. So the important things that we want to get back from my login function are if an error is generated and if a user is returned. If a user is returned, we're going to assume that you've been successfully logged in. So we're going to return those two properties back as state. So that's what the two refs are. As I stated before, the two um, converting them back to refs are going to allow them to be something that can be utilized in the um, login form component. Now we're going to add the Firebase functions, um, basic login, basic logout. Uh, the uh, Firebase function requires a email address slash username and a password. Um, those will get passed into the function. Uh, this is the Firebase authentication. This is the Firebase authentication um, object, which has the sign in with email and password function that we're going to use. This function returns a promise, and on success, the uh, Firebase Firebase auth user credential is returned if successful. Um, email, as I said, the email and password is specified as the parameters that we're going to pass in. Uh, I think we're going to just go with the old-fashioned way of, um, of using promises. I'm not going to use uh, async await here, but if that's what you're more comfortable with, you can use async and await, and you should get the, you'll get the exact same results. Uh, so we have success, and then we have the error that we're going to make sure we capture here and assign the error that happens to the state.error property. Let's format and clean this up a little bit. Uh, so let's see, we get our email, we get our password, uh, on success, the promise. And then the other thing that I found sometime with Firebase, if you get other errors that aren't directly related, um, you're not going to catch them in the error of the promise, but you will actually, I don't want to say catch. Um, you won't catch them. Eh, they won't show up and um, as resolving as an error, but they'll throw an error exception. And so what we do is we set our state error uh, property from either if it resolves to an error or if an exception is thrown and we have to catch the error. So that's what we're doing here on the login. And as I said before, we need to specify the username and password that gets sent in. And now we'll set our next function, which is our logout, uh, which should be pretty straightforward. Once again, we're taking the Firebase off and, oh, was that error? It's going to caught that. We're going to take the Firebase off and on that Firebase auth object, there is a method to sign the user out. Um, exact same thing, we're going to... Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, oh, I was getting an error because we weren't passing back um, the functions um, uh, that were being returned from the state. I mean, passing back, yeah, passing back the function along with the state properties. So I've just taken the original um, auth and I've added that in. We have our use login. Uh, yeah, let's destructure that so you can actually see the names of the uh, properties that are getting returned from use login. Make it a lot easier to kind of work with them. And so we, as I said, we get the login method, we get the logout method, and we get the error property that gets returned. So now we go into our do login, and we actually call the method that is getting returned from the use login uh, view composition function. We structured the email and password from the creds um, reactive uh, data property. And the interesting thing is that, um, where's my user object? Yeah, what was the error? The dig in and find an error. Uh, yeah, I was saying email, email, 
first thing I'm going to catch the air. I put the catch in the wrong place, my apologies. So we're going to wrap the whole thing in a catch so when an exception is thrown, we can get that air and pass it back. Let's see if that kind of helps us clean things up a bit. Makes our little, um, you know, chrome air go away. Let's move it to the bottom so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Let's see if we can. All right, see, so now I'm getting my error logged properly on my page, which is what I wanted to see. And then let's see if I actually log in with the real user. All right, what's the error? Something's not right. Ah, I see I had username up there, and it actually should be email address. So now let's try again. See if we can get this to work. First, let's see. Throw an error. Let's add a real one. See, all right, so we're getting the error for the bad email address. Now let's put in a good email address. Well, it looks like I don't actually have a user. Hmm. There we go. I found the real user that I had. Looks like the code is right. It was my bad. My apologies. Um, things are working properly now. And then now what we want to do is in the app view component, we need to use our use login to actually get the log out function to log the user out on this um, app component as opposed to. So in the app component, you log them out. In the login form, you log them in. So we're going to use the use login again. Uh, we're going to just, all we really should need here is the log out function. We really didn't need the log out function in the other component. So let's, let's Aaron, figure you can type out right. All right, I got my log out set. Uh, we have our error. Now add the log out. Put some comments in here for our log out function. Let's see, log out user from user login. The log out function connected. And it seems like our log out is working properly. Because that's pretty much what you get here. Login and log out is working. So I kind of went through that a little fast. I apologize, but um, please feel free to check out uh, the blog post for all of uh, for this video and the previous video where I cover the integration of Firebase with um, the View Composition API. We covered login, log out. We also covered. Um, restarting the application and Firebase making the check to determine if you had a user already. Um, the next video in this series we actually will have a generic way for you to um, read, write, update, and delete objects in Firebase. Once again wrapping it in a view composition function. We'll create a composition function around documents and a composition function around collections. Please subscribe to the channel and you know hit me up with a comment in the bottom if there's something else you'd like to see that I haven't touched on yet. Thanks for listening. Bye. Yeah, sorry for watching. Bye now.